A portion of my basement is finished and divided by this wall. At one time there was a bifold door but is long gone. I decided it might be nice to build a sliding barn door from some reclaimed wood to fill the space. Follow along as I show you the build process. Please don't try any of the techniques I use here if you're uncomfortable performing them. Know, understand, and follow the safety instructions for your equipment and don't do something just because you see a guy on the internet do it. Here I used a chalk line to make a straight line that I could follow with my circular saw and then flattened one side of this board with a hand plane so that I could create a straight surface to run against the fence and create a backer for the track. It took two passes, once to make the initial cut and then flip the board over keeping the same straight side against the fence and finish the cut with the second pass. Then finally a quick trim to width. And length. Here I'm cutting an eighth inch rabbit to accept the metal track. Over at the drill press I drill a series of holes to mount the track in the rabbit. Trim off the track with a hacksaw. I use some welding metal from the home store for the track. It comes with a coating of oil and I use some acetone to clean that off. Then a couple of coats of flat black spray paint. Off camera I assembled the track and took it down to the location and installed it so that I could take some measurements from the bottom of the track and the top of the track to the floor. With measurements in hand I back out in the shop to create the frame of the door. This uh, rail that I'm using was full of nails so I swapped out for a discount blade. This is just a pallet rail from a really long pallet that I was able to find back last summer and I simply resawed it to produce two boards and again, using the technique of one side that was flat against the fence and flip it over and keep that same side against the fence. Then I cut a couple of rabbits to accept the slats that will go in and form the center portion of the door. performed the same operation on a couple of other boards I had that were about the same thickness to use as the top and bottom of the door. I ended up with four planks like this and then took them over to the chop saw and cut everything to the right lengths. With everything cut to length, I secured the corners with pocket hole screws and water activated glue.
in the interest of time, I only showed assembling one corner. Grabbed another piece of stock to make the center brace, cut it to length and cut rabbits on each end so that it fits and matches the stock that I use to make the door frame. I used pocket hole screws to fasten the center brace, left the glue out in case I need to remove this center section and trim some of the slats to allow for wood expansion. Over at the workbench I used a hand plane to clean up the surface of the boards and make them a little smoother. You don't want to remove too much of the patina, but this will save a good bit of time in sanding. It also adds to the barn door style look. Sometimes pallet wood's very inconsistent and it takes a combination of different length of planes to achieve the look you're looking for. Here I'm test fitting the first slat, just trying to determine what the rough dimensions need to be for each slat and then using the plane technique to smooth each slat just as I did the frame. I used my number five plane to join the edges. I didn't want a lot of gap here, but I didn't make them perfect. Once I established the dimensions and a good workflow, I set out to plane each one of the boards and get them ready for adding to the door. Sometimes I plane both sides of the board to see which side had the best look. With one side flat jointed, I used the table saw to trim up the other side, being careful not to shave off the width too much, and I wanted these boards to be random. Over at the door, I just used the side that I thought was the best look and fastened them all in with some 18 gauge inch and a half nails.
I drove the nails at quite an angle so that they would not protrude through the face of the door. This door is intended to be purely cosmetic to the finished side of the basement, so these nails are going in from the back side of the door. Here I'm cutting up some of the same welding metal to be used as the door hangers. The rollers will go at the top end and the bottom end will get fastened to the door and this is what suspends the door on the track. With those measurements in mind, I laid out points on each one of the hangers where bolts could go in the door frame and also for the roller and drilled those at the drill press. The goal was to have about three-fourths of an inch between the door and the track and about half an inch at the bottom between the door and the floor. Here I attached the hanger assemblies with the hardware and took it down to the basement for a test fit. Back up to the shop for the aging and finish process. I took the hanger assemblies off and used a small block plane to chamfer the edges and then gave all of the surfaces of the door a good sanding with 80 grit sandpaper. Usually you lose people in a sanding process in a how-to video, but the sanding is very much a part of the aging process here, and you'll see in a few minutes some of the techniques I use to make the wood look as if it's older. As part of the aging process, I used some flat black spray paint placed around randomly on the door. This darkens and shades areas where damage may have occurred during the build process and makes it appear that it was there for years. Then you just sand out all of that painted area and blend it in so that it looks like it's been part of the door surface for years. When you're working with pallet wood that's maybe been laying around for a long time but you damage it by removing nails, spray paint is often a great way to hide that recent damage from a nail blowout. Here I'm just blowing off the dust and getting it ready for some finish. doing a two-tone finish process on this. I wanted the field of the door to be much lighter than the door frame, so I used some masking tape to tape off the edges of the door frame itself and applied a dark walnut Danish oil to the frame. I just flooded the surfaces here completely and left it sit without wiping any of it off. This type of wood will soak this oil up rapidly and it takes quite a bit of it. The Danish oil soaks in and dries pretty quickly so after it had flashed I went ahead and removed the tape, put some clear Danish oil in a tub and painted that on the field of the door. As you can tell it will be much lighter than the door frame, 
but any spots that were too light, I went back with some of the darker walnut Danish oil and filled in. You'll see how the technique works over the time lapse. Here I'm going back with some of that dark walnut stain and hitting the high spots that I thought were a little too light still. The final step in the finished process, I sprayed on a couple of coats of lacquer. You can see here I fight the spray just a little bit. It took a little bit of time to sort out how to get the spray working and the lacquer thin enough to spray appropriately. As the project went on, I decided the door started to look pretty monolithic, so I decided to break it up just a little bit and make a handle to go on the door as well. This seems to break up the face of the door just a little and cut down on some of that monolithic look. I just used a piece of pallet rail where the pallet fork would go. Whenever possible, I think it's fun to reuse an element of the original pallet wood in your project. It kind of gives a throwback to where the material came from. Have to give a little shout out to Jay Bates over at Jay's Custom Creations here. This little router table is similar to the one that he did a video on recently and it's where I got the idea and it's already proving to be very handy. I drilled some pilot holes in the back of the handle and inserted a couple of nails and this allowed me to mark a spot on the door where the holes needed to be drilled. I did a similar aging and finishing process on the handle as I did the rest of the door, and here you see me attaching it. Because the video was getting a little long, I made some travel limit stops off camera, and you see me attaching those here.